Welcome to uh, Zoom Seekers, and uh, this is the the August version. Um, so uh, hopefully you're you're depending on where you are in, in the country, you're you're comfortable and have air conditioning on and every everything else because we've we've got a hot talk for you tonight. Um, but our our speaker is I I guess she's my boss. Uh, Rachel Cushman is the dive safety officer for aquarium operations at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, and has uh, been there many many moons, rising up to the ranks, starting as an administrative assistant and then becoming an assistant dive safety officer. And a few months ago, being appointed as the overall dive safety officer for what goes on on site. And uh, we're sort of in the process of uh, gearing back up. I want to say uh, pre-pandemic, we had like 150 divers or so in the program. And uh, we have now, I think, in, in the neighborhood of 80 or so, 80 or 90. Uh, so we're gearing things back up. And uh, Rachel is here to tell you about not only what it's like to dive at the aquarium, and for those in other parts of the country, it may apply to aquariums in your area as well, but also uh, give you some probably tips on if you're interested in joining our teams, um, what you got to do for that. So without further ado, please give a warm Zoom Seekers welcome to Rachel. Uh, I was going to say Rachel Kaposha. Welcome her too. To Rachel Cushman. That's our, Rachel, that's our. our Yay. Show. Yay. Thank you. Thank you for such the introduction. Um, anyway, hello, everybody. Um, happy Tuesday. Uh, thank you for inviting me to come in and talk about um, diving at the Aquarium of the Pacific, um, but more so also how you could do it too, why we do it, um, what we do, why we do it, and how you can do it too if you're locally. I'm going to try to get you, well, I'm going to try to get all of you to want to come and dive with us, whether you can or not. Um, you know, that'll be up to you. I'm sure they all want to, Rachel, whether you <laughs> let them or not. That okay. is the key. Well, I'm sorry if you live far away and you can't because uh, it's, it's super duper fun. Um, let me get started by sharing my screen. I have a little PowerPoint presentation and I hope it all works. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. I've got everybody muted so they can't say anything. Yes. Okay. All yes. Good. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. So volunteer diving at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Um, again, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Rachel. I'm the dive safety officer of Aquarium Operations. Um, I've been working at the Aquarium of the Pacific and onboarding AOP divers for over 11 years. Um, I got the job when I was 20 years old. I came to the aquarium every year growing up and, in fact, was there for the opening. Uh, I was seven years old when uh, I did my very first current event report on them installing the blue whale at the Aquarium Pacific. So you can actually, uh, so you can tell Aquarium Pacific is very much home for me. I absolutely love it there um, and I don't plan on leaving. I'm also a NAWI instructor. Uh, you may have seen me in some scuba ads for wearing slip and surf skins and dive skins. I've also been um, in the excess scuba catalog and I did some modeling for scuba modeling for TUSA dive equipment as well. Um, I first got certified to dive right on my 12th birthday. So I'm a scuba diehard. <laughs> and um, back in 2019, I did an international scuba pageant uh, called Scuba Queen USA, where I met 27 girls from around the world who all love scuba diving. So you can definitely say I absolutely love scuba diving and therefore having a career in diving, working at the aquarium with other people that love diving as much as I do is really quite the treat. In fact, we call this our dream job. There's even a sign up on the door in our in our dive office um, that look that says, welcome to my dream job. Here's a picture of what a, um, the dive locker actually used to look like. This is kind of an old shot, um, <laughs> but uh, it still looks pretty much the same. And it certainly is the same in terms of the amount of hustle bustle that happens there every single day. So we have divers in the water every single day of the year, except for Christmas day. That's our only day off. And that's the day that the fish don't like the most because it's their diet day of the year. Um, we have other diet days here and there as well. But Christmas day is the only day that we don't have divers in the water. Um, that means that you're always going to see people in the water, uh, always cleaning the exhibits and 
speaking to the guests and doing a whole bunch of fun stuff that I'm going to tell you a little bit more about. As it currently stands, we have over 140 scuba divers at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and over 60% of them are volunteers. Um, we have nine dive teams, and these teams work as basically kind of like it's like a meeting group. People come every single week at the same time, same day, same time, every week um, for a minimum of one year, about 75% of the year. Um, so most teams are during the afternoon. So we have a team every day on from noon to five. We have some evening cleaning teams that don't do any feeding. They just scrub the rocks from five to eight on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And we're in the process of developing more cleaning teams on Saturday and Sunday mornings as we continue to grow our program back to what it was pre-pandemic, um, which is something actually quite to mention. Before, before the pandemic, we had 18 volunteer dive teams of over 180 volunteers alone. We had about 260 divers in our program. And collectively, our institution did over 20,000 dives per year which is over twice as much as our next competitor. So it's more diving than any other zoo, museum, or any other dive program institution um, that we can that we know of in North America. So I think that's pretty cool because while a lot of different a lot of different aquariums have their special thing that they have. For example, the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Have anybody anybody gone to the Monterey Bay Aquarium here? Well, they've got awesome sea otters that just come out from the wild, and that's a huge attraction. Or in Georgia Aquarium, they've got big, awesome whale sharks, which everybody loves to come see. And what I think is really unique and cool about the Aquarium of the Pacific is you will be, you're much more likely to see a diver in the water, a person in the water with the other animals at the Aquarium of the Pacific than any other aquarium in the country. Um, we uh, we do many different dive shows every day as well. We do, we do more dive shows than most other aquariums. So we're the, really, I'd like to say we're the diver's aquarium. It's really special to see people connect with the ocean and develop a relationship with the ocean because they see the example of a diver underwater not being scared of all of these sharks that are swimming around them. Being just feet away from that person but showing them the magic of what it's like to be immersed in the water on scuba. I mean, it's really the coolest. It's a really cool feeling. And it's the reason why there have been a lot of people that have continued to be volunteer diving at the aquarium for much longer than just one year. Um, of course, as you know, Ken loves it there. <laughs> um, what's super cool about volunteer diving at the aquarium is all the gear is provided. All you have to bring is your own bathing suit, towel, and your own mask because everybody likes their own mask. So you don't have to worry about lugging gear back and forth. We have it all there for you. And we prefer that you use ours actually. And so we keep it all up to date. Um, sometimes it's brand new gear. We actually get a lot of brand new gear every single year, which is awesome. I try to keep all the wetsuits fixed up. If you wanted to wear your own wetsuit, you can keep one at the aquarium. But for the most part, Everything that you need to go diving is there supplied at the aquarium, as well as a warm water exhibit and a cold water exhibit, which you can go into both in one day, which is super awesome. Okay, aquarium divers, what do we do? Why do we do it? And how can you do it too? Let's start with what we do. Number one job of ours is cleaning. I call it the war on algae because it truthfully never ends. And it gets really bad during the summertime when we have all of this beautiful sunshine that's just making the water so green. Um, you learn how to use really cool equipment. Like um, up there you see that big blue hose is what we call a hydrovac system. It's basically just like a pool hose vacuum system. Um, over in the top left is a big, a heavy underwater power scrubber called an Armada or a Meridian. And trust me, once you clean something with that giant brush moving around, you'll never clean your kitchen floors again without thinking about, man, I wish I had this thing at home. <laughs> it's a really cool tool. Um, and you learn how to use it underwater, which is uh, definitely a workout and a fun story to tell. 
We also um, systematically always have to wipe the windows down because what fun is an exhibit if you can't see in it? Um, we keep the sea lions in the water. We keep all animals in the water with our divers with the exception of the otters. Otters do have to be off exhibit in order for us to be in the water because they're not very nice animals, contrary to their cute, cuddly. Uh, you'd think they'd be cute and cuddly, but they're actually not the nicest. And so just for the safety of the divers and the otters, we take them off exhibit. Um, but we always got to clean in there, continuous cleaning at all times. And then um, obviously in the bottom right hand corner, you see a diver with a big scrub brush. A lot of times that's the peep everyone's most preferred mode of cleaning. You know, you just get in the water. It's nice and warm. You're working on your buoyancy. You're unloading all of that nice nitrogen and you're not anywhere near your cell phone. No one can talk to you. You know, you might be scrubbing a rock, but scrubbing a rock while on scuba is a lot more fun. <laughs> uh, we also do clean up after ourselves. I think that's an important thing to note is that we don't have a cleanup team that comes up and cleans up after the divers. The divers are volunteers through and through. They're not only going in and cleaning inside the exhibits, they're helping keep, keep the dive locker area tidy as well, um, like cleaning or feeding buckets and things. Don't worry, we're not, not having divers clean toilets, but we do clean the feeding utensils and you learn how to, um, you learn how to fill your own tank, which is super great. We like to say, you know, we work by the Girl Scout rule to always leave things cleaner than when you found them. All right, the next thing we do is feeding. We do underwater feeding in two different types. One is called scatter feeding and the other one is target feeding. Believe it or not, the biggest fish in the exhibits would likely not get any food if all we did was just scatter the food on the surface. It's because all the smaller fish that are much more agile would actually get all of the food. Granted, after a long time, you know, then just the bigger fish would then get the smaller fish that got all the food because that's how the ecosystem, that's how the food chain works, right? So to try to prevent that from happening, and we do a good job at it, we keep all of our big fish happily fed. We feed them restaurant quality seafood. Um, so the same thing that you would get at your own seafood restaurant, we offer it to them um, every day or every other day. And um, depending on what the animal specifically needs, and it's up to the aquarist in charge to tell us how much food um, to give them, um, they prepare it all for us. Our job is just to take that bucket, go in the water, and feed the animal in the way that the aquarist has described us that they want it to be fed. It's because the way that we're feeding these animals is essentially a form of training behavior and modification. And so if you can't hold your position and feed this animal at the same time, it's a lot of task loading. Um, that's the important role of it is to make sure that the giant sea bass or the sheephead or the shark are as far away from the sardines as we possibly can get them during feeding time. So they don't get confused on who their food is or what their food is. So feeding is super duper duper fun. And that's always done in the afternoon time. All right. Oh, here's a little, uh, Here's a little video of what uh, it's like to do a feeding in our tropical reef exhibit. There's no sound and I sped up pretty quickly. So I hope no one gets too seasick in here. Um, but it's, um, it's, a, it's a fun way to show that it is what we call coordinated chaos under there. Uh, we've got someone doing what we call a fish tornado right here. They're doing that spinning motion, not only just to let, let the food go out, but actually to distract those Trevally fish. Because if we were to stay in one place, the Trevallis get kind of bored and they'll go off and bother another di feeder diver who's trying to feed maybe the grouper. Um, for example, actually, we're heading up on that diver right now who's going down there to feed the grouper. Um, these positions have changed actually in the exhibit. So... Uh, and that's something that happens all the time, too, is these positions will change. The way that you feed certain animals will change. Um, it's constantly adapting. New animals sometimes are introduced into the exhibit, and therefore we have to change the behavior of the other animals. And therefore, it's up to us to relearn how to train them how to feed. It's um, it, Let's just say when you're diving at the aquarium, you're there's not much room to think about anything else that's really going on. And that's a big reason why a lot of us like diving. You know, it's it's just a way to check out and focus on something else that's maybe a little bit more beautiful, a little bit more complete. And that's that's really what we get to capture when we're at the aquarium is feeding with the animals and being with the crowd, 
you're really doing a, something much more important and it's fun along the way. Here's a really funny graphic that one of the volunteer divers created to, uh, it says aquarium divers know what targeting, this is what target feeding is. Well, that's certainly what it feels like. It feels like your uh, a whole bunch of snipers are <laughs> stuck on you. And a fish is saying, hand over the bucket slowly. And the broccoli, we know you have the broccoli. That's one of our cow nose rays that like to eat the broccoli that we feed the herbivores. However, cow nose rays are not herbivores. So that's always kind of an interesting thing. Fish do interesting things. We'll talk about that next. Um, so another thing we do is give underwater presentations to the public. This is a super duper cool thing that you will never really have an opportunity to do in any other space. Uh, these, we give presentations in our cold water blue cavern exhibit, as well as our warm water one. Um, we used to do up to eight to 12 dive presentations every single day. Now we do four. I hope to do more. We hope to do more in the future, but right now we do four every single day, two in each of the big exhibits. And it's so cool. You don't get to hear anybody else except for your dry side interpreter, um, which is an edu somebody from the education staff who's asking you questions on a microphone on the dry side, while you on the wet side are hard line connected into a microphone, which is fastened inside a full face mask that we teach you how to use. Um, and so you can actually talk in this full face mask and this little microphone. And then there are these little earphones that cover your ears and you can hear the person on the microphone on the dry side and you go back and forth and have just a full conversation underwater. It's so cool. Um, it, you really learn how to manage your buoyancy pretty darn well when it comes time to start learning how to talk, stay in one place and give... Um, <laughs> give everybody um, a nice good show along the way and so underwater presentations are something that we really love doing and sometimes we can do um and we also talk to the guests when they're up in the dive locker as well so not all of our presentations are done underwater but if doing underwater presentations isn't really your thing and you would rather just clean and feed there we've got jobs for you to do you do not need to be a presentation diver in order to be a volunteer diver at the aquarium um it's a special perk that we offer those who like to talk <laughs> okay and last but not least our final job that we do at the aquarium which is arguably the most important one is we are the eyes for the aquarists in the exhibits so there may be only one or two aquarists in charge of one exhibit that's 350,000 gallons and might have thousands and thousands of different animals in these exhibits. Those aquarists can't get in the water and look at every animal all the time. They also don't necessarily know what nor this animal's normal behavior is all the time. And that's what's so important for the divers and the dive program is because we are the ones that are in the water so often that we know what normal looks like. We know that this one fish likes to swim in this weird circle over this one coral every single day at about four o'clock. And if this fish isn't doing that, we might start looking around for where is that fish that always does that weird swimming thing. One of our most famous fish that has the strangest behavior, his name uh, has coined himself a name. There, there's a picture of him on the far left side of your screen. His name is Bubbles. Uh, can you tell why? He um, loves to eat the diver's bubbles that we exhale. I think it has something to do with massaging his gills or what's, or something. I'm not sure why. He's just a weird fish and that's what he likes to do. We have six other of his same species, individuals of his same species in that exhibit, and none of them do this except for Bubbles. So we know that that is Bubbles' special behavior. And with Bubbles doing that special behavior, if he's not there doing that behavior, then we know something is wrong. I like to say how it's just like if you had like a, a cat or a dog. How many people here have a normal dog? Right. Nobody has a normal dog because every dog is weird. But when your one dog isn't doing his weird thing he normally does, well, then there's room for concern. So that's the most important job of the volunteer diver. And it takes a while of coming every week to really know what normal looks like so that you can be seasoned enough to be able to help the Aquarists in their husbandry work. 
Any questions about what we do? You wanna know why we do it? To instill a sense of wonder, respect, and stewardship for the Pacific Ocean, its inhabitants, and ecosystems. This is our mission statement, and I love it so darn much because I think it's so important, and it really is the job what we do for the public. We teach the public how to interact with the animals in the water. We give them a sense of wonder because I can't tell you how many times in my 11 years working there, I've heard, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if that person's breathing. I wonder how much, how much money that person makes. I wonder if I could ever do that too. I wonder if he's scared when he feeds that shark. I hear these every single day. And so instilling that sense of wonder is what we do. And how we behave with the fish, not only, but with the coral as well, is demonstrating how we show respect and stewardship for the ocean. Even though 95% of the coral that you see in the Aquarium Pacific is artificial, certainly in the big exhibits that we're kicking around in, it's totally pieces of plastic. But we as divers have to pretend that it's real because if the guests, we want the guests to think it's real, we, we certainly don't want them to just know it's obviously fake. And so if we're sitting on a tabletop coral because it's a little bit easier to clean this rock, that certainly doesn't look good to the audience, but they might not even know it. So how we behave with our environment, even though it's artificial and how we have perfect buoyancy, it actually is showcasing to other people how to interact with your environment. So what we do is really important. We also do it for the teams. We get great dive buddies. Here's, I love this picture. This is my old Friday afternoon team. And it's a whole bunch of goofy dudes, right? Well, dudes and chicks. And I think that this is a really great example of just the fun dive buddies that people make. Everybody who comes to us comes from different walks of life. We've got firemen, lawyers, teachers, medical professionals, stay-at-home moms, you name it, mechanics, so many different, so many different types of people, but everybody here loves diving. Um, you get much better at diving because though it might look like a big pool that you're diving in, I like to say it's more like a jacuzzi and you get unpredictable currents that come out of, I would say, I call them unpredictable microcurrents within the exhibit, which AKA is just big jets moving water around. And so you definitely get a fine tune your buoyancy when one minute the current's going this way and two feet this way, you're going that way. Um, you really get to fine tune and it's fun. Um, marine biology education. You learn so much about the fish that are in the exhibits. You learn a lot about how those fish behave. You talk with the aquarists and you hear about new fish that they hope to be introducing. Just by default, your marine biology education expands and there's also opportunities to take classes through the aquarium if that's what you would like to do. And just ultimately for building a better tomorrow is why we love to do it. Because the public absolutely loves it. As you can see, we can see them just as well as they can see us. I love to also, I always love to see the adults' eyes because they sometimes get just as big as the kids do. We always do it for all the big smiles and sometimes the big tongues too. <laughs> um, this wasn't very sanitary, but I think it's a funny picture. <laughs> all right. So that's why we do it. So how can you do it too? Well, your qualifications, you need to be at least 18 years old and you need to be a rescue diver, rescue certified diver minimum. Okay. So that's what you need to do to apply, right? You need to be at least 18 years old and a rescue diver. You also need, will need to have 50 logged open ocean dives, be current in first aid, CPR, AED, and O2, and pass a background check, dive physical, and drug screen later down the line. Um, the I will tell you that the minimum requirements to apply are the top two. You can learn a little bit more about the program after application and decide if you want to do the last three. Um, so it's just a good thing to let people know. One of the big qualifications that is necessary to do this job is to have at the time available to do it. So the time commitment is one day a week, every week for a period of one year same day, same time for 75% of the year. 
And this is important because it takes about a year of you coming in every week to know what normal looks like. Your also takes about that long for you to get trained well enough on all the feedings, all the cleanings, all the different exhibits that you want to get trained on. It takes a solid year of you being in the program and diving to become the diver we need you to be. And so that's why it's a big commitment, but it's a good one and hopefully one that you'll stick around for a little bit longer. We're looking for divers who have excellent dive skills that have really um, had spent some time practicing their buoyancy. They are good at problem solving. A big one is situational awareness, adaptability, and safety. Lastly, we're always looking for people who have a great attitude and dedication to the aquarium values and standards. If you have all those things and you say, you know what? I think I'm ready. I think I want to be a volunteer diver at the aquarium. Like, I think I want to be a real diver. All right. I, I say real diver because so many people sometimes think that we're robots in the water. They, they think we're fake. They'll say like they'll argue about it. It's really fun to watch. So if you're planning, on, if you're going to be a real diver, um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to sign up online and go to the Aquarium Pacific website, navigate around to the volunteers and in an adult volunteering, the dive volunteer application will be open. The application is not always open. Um, right now, it will be open for the remainder of summer, probably up through maybe October. Um, and then it'll probably close and then reopen for the summertime next year. Um, it kind of just changes as the demands of the program change and what we're trying to do next. Um, so, but you can sign up now if you've got your rescue diver certification. Um, you're, you will then attend a diver info night, which is very similar to this kind of meeting. Um, it's an online Zoom meeting. And then you will be evaluated on your swimming and scuba skills. So th some skills to practice would be a 400 yard swim, 25 yard swim on one breath, treading water for 10 minutes and more. And you'll also be assessed on your scuba skills. How good are you at hovering, removing and replacing all of your gear? Can you buddy breathe without a mask? How good are you lifting things underwater um, while controlling your buoyancy? Or have you done a rescue on someone recently in a controlled manner? These are all things that we check at the evaluate at the checkout. If you pass the checkout, then you're introduced into our onboarding process. You'll attend another online meeting that all of the aquarium volunteers attend, one specifically for diving at the aquarium. And then last but not least, you'll perform, um, you'll, uh, you'll pass an occupational diving physical that the Aquarium of the Pacific pays for. It's an extensive dive physical with like blood work, spirometry tests, an EKG. It's the same kind of physical that commercial divers get. It's something that the aquarium, the aquarium has a doctor for and the aquarium will pay for. Um, so that's kind of an interesting perk that can sometimes seem like an inconvenience to get every year, but it's, it's a lot of tests and that can be kind of a fun little perk as well. This is what it, the... Uh, volunteering um, application online looks like. This is going to be the page that you're going to want to navigate to. And um, yeah, are you ready to be a real diver at the Aquarium of the Pacific? And if so, well, hopefully you'll apply. Does anyone have any questions? That's my presentation. Rachel? I realized I wasn't on mute. Rachel, stop your share. Okay. If you would. There we go. Everybody will give the traditional Zoom seekers thank you. Come on. That's better. And and now we're happy to take uh, questions. You can either... Now we're either happy to take questions. Oh, let's see. And I, what I need you to do, I'm going to mute those of you who just unmuted yourselves. Otherwise, we get the echo. So either use the little raise hand or you can actually physically, whoops, I realized too, I haven't turned my video back on. There we go. Uh, you can either physically raise your hand like Robin is, or you can use the little hand signal like uh, I thought Amelia, you just, just had it up. Um, but uh, I, I'll just mention, because some of you are familiar with, and a distinction that, the two things that, that Rachel mentioned where at our place you come in uh, an assigned shift, specific sh uh, shift every week, as opposed to a place like California Science Center where you sign up for a shift on sort of, you know, an as available basis. So here you come in a specific time. And the other thing to understand too, if this is something you're interested in doing, 
Don't think you can go in and fill out the application tonight and you'll start diving next week. There's a definite process as Rachel laid out there that it'll be a little while till we, we get you in the, uh, in the program. So there, there are a few hoops to jump on through. So Amelia, did you have a, you had your hand up a second ago or, but you put it down. Do you have a question or, or no? I'm going to uh, take, no, it was, there, it was a clapping hand. So oh, there was a clapping hand. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for playing the clapping hand. So then Robin, you had your hand up. So I'll give you first crack at the question. You got to unmute yourself, Robin. Nope, 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 nope. Yep. Nope. Got it. There you go. Yep. Okay. There you go. Hi. Um, two questions. The first one is what if you are a non insulin dependent diabetic? Is that preclude you from diving in the in the volunteer program? No. No, we have no. had no that has no we have had no that has had sorry, there's a bit of an echo. Um sorry, there's a bit of an echo. No, no, that hasn't I'm, been I'm a problem you for us in the, the past. Uh, it, have, it hasn't been a problem for us um, in the past. However, it is um, that occupational diving physical. It all has to do with how the doctor feels about it. We don't make any type of medical decisions. That is strictly up to the doctor to decide. And then we will manage it if the doctor says it's something to manage. So, Robin, you can unmute yourself. There's more of the question to go there. But I mentioned in the physical, there's a spirometry test. You know, which is blowing into the tube. So basically, that's, you know, depending on how severe your asthma is, that's going to affect the spirometry result. Okay. okay, second question. Uh, you were talking about the, um, uh, the class, the presentation. It sounds like you're describing an OTS yes. space setup. Yep. Is that yes. what? Yes. Yeah. It's an okay. OTS guardian. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's an OTS guardian. Okay, who's up next? Jim, Jim McGronick. Can always count on Jim for a question. <laughs> Rachel, great presentation. Sounds like a lot of fun. Do you ever have divers that go through the whole program and then they they get into the one of the tanks and then freak out and go, okay, uh, I, I, I it seems like a lot of fun, but I can't do this. It's it's too freaky. Yes, yes, it hasn't happened too often, um, but it has happened. Oh, oh, actually a story that I have one part of the 50 logged dives requirement that I require, I require an actual dive log, uh, either listed out like in an Excel spreadsheet or something. I just, I don't want a sticker on someone's card that says I have 200 dives. Right. Um, and it's because I like to see where people have been diving. Cause one time I had someone that got into the program and he was a, had tons of dives, but they were all in a quarry. And he got very uncomfortable with the giant sea bass and just all the large animals. And it was something that I just hadn't really learned. And it was just, he'd say, he's like, I really haven't been diving with animals enough that it really, it, it spooked him. And it, it was a, definitely a bigger learning curve for him because your confidence in the exhibits, whether it's real or completely made up, is really how you get better uh, is really kind of the ticket. That's the ticket to getting better at feeding the animals underwater. Same thing with any kind of animal. You know, are you confident in your dog training or not? You know, so are, are you confident when you're feeding these animals? I fake it till I make it like no one else. <laughs> but so it really, it's it's a, it's definitely a confidence thing. It's very, very important when it comes to being the, in the exhibit. But with the, the, the good news about that diver that Rachel mentioned was he was dynamite at cleaning empty exhibit tanks. Oh, Fantastic. yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, truthfully, the people, it's what I thought is the funniest is the people that really get the heeb like heebie-jeebie out the most, uh, like the big animals, like feeding the sharks and stuff, are a lot of times my, like, big, strong, macho, <laughs> big, strong, macho divers. And so I've always thought that was kind of a interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's like, interesting it's like the elephant being scared of the mouse. Kind of. That's it. That's exactly. I, you know what? That's exactly it. <laughs> cool. Who else got Thank a you. question? Thank you, Jim. We're going to let her off the hook with two questions. Oh, uh, no. Look, I see more. <laughs> oh, there we go. Craig's got his hand up. I couldn't see him on. Uh, I, I've got different monitors set up different ways. Craig, you're up. And Rachel, you're up after him. 
Yeah, hi. I'm there you the, go. Uh, Catalan Marine Society, and the aquarium used to provide uh, uh, field work for us before the pandemic, namely putting thermographs around uh, the mainland and also servicing our uh, scientific mooring at two harbors. Do you ever see uh, a way forward to helping us again in the future as we put out more instrumentation? Yes. Yes. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, a, one part of my presentation that I didn't really include was that we have a whole separate program for field diving at the aquarium. There's a We have a volunteer scientific diving team, an AAUS certified scientific diving team um, that does open ocean diving. And we help like with the thermographs and sensors, like you said, Craig, at, um, in its current state. It's why I'm not talking about it is because it hasn't gotten, we haven't been able to ramp it up to where it needs to be, but we have just hired somebody um, a few months ago who is in the process of getting, I mean, I, I see an awesome future. I'm super pumped up about it. And so if you, we're, we're going to be back in action. We're just still kind of, uh, what's the right word? You know, when we're just, we're, we're, we're almost we're preparing. There. We're preparing. Yeah, we're preparing. I was trying to think of a more like dynamic word or like a more like exciting word, you know. <laughs> um, we're we're very happily preparing. I guess so. I guess we're so. excited okay. about preparing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We're, I'll I think don't, of the we're word planning and planning. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So I I'm very excited for um, our our scientific diving program in the future. Um I will say that you know our all of our volunteers when we do have the AAUS scientific diving program up and running in full swing, we do a, do an annual class and we will do usually do an annual class. Um, since it's been a few years, there's a kind of a backup of people that are going to want this class, which is why I don't like to bring it up in, initially because a lot of people like will volunteer because they want to be part of the scientific diving team. It takes some time. It takes some time before you can get on that squad, but it is an, also a super, super cool opportunity as well. I don't think well, I answered your question, Craig, but. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know we're out here. Okay. <laughs> Looking forward to the report. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, Rachel Kaposha, do you have a question? I do. Hi, Rachel. It's Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Um, <laughs> I am dying to do this program, as Ken knows, but I've got to get rescue certified. So I'm I'm gonna do that and then I'll be. And I I I'm right, I'm retired and I volunteer right now at a local homeless shelter. So I want to do something with a lot more wonder and a little less crazy. So I'm <coughs> hoping to add this as my other volunteer opportunity. But I have one question and that's the following. I travel a lot. Mm -hmm. Um and I want to make sure that I understand the first year commitment. So you said at, at least one day a week at the same time every day for 75% of the year. Is that the idea? Yes. So 39 weeks, roughly, if they, you want to be there at the same time. Yes. Sometimes. So okay. 13, I tell, tell people, you can blow off 13 weeks. And then the whole year you get 13 weeks, which sounds like a lot. Um, And so it, you know, but how I really like to just let people think, like, wrap their mind around it. Is that like, this is what you do. Like, say, like on whatever day you get, like, say, if you're like, Tuesday afternoon. This is what you do Tuesday afternoons. Of yeah. course, if you can, if you need an appointment for something and that's the only time you can do it, then that needs to happen. Or if you're going on vacation or if something else comes up or, you know, some kind of family event comes up, we, we live, we leave wiggle room for that. But if it's something that's constantly happening, like if you're a Saturday person and there's just like lots of like me, I, I could not volunteer on a Saturday afternoon in my life right now. Um, there's just too much going on for Saturday afternoons for me. And so I wouldn't be able to be consistent enough on that team. And so, especially within your first year, consistency is, is important because you don't want to start learning how to feed a fish and then you're gone and then say you're gone for two or three weeks at a time. And then you come back and then now you're trying to feed, learn for three weeks and then you're gone for three weeks again, like that can make it a lot more difficult for people to have a good to learn how to do this what they need to do so it can just yeah. take time so that's the reason for the commitment um and so that's um so like you know there are definitely people that have come through that i've told maybe 
because whether they were, I think it's been, it's been a lot of students that have come through. I've had to kind of talk to them about their schedule, whether they can make their commitment. Um, people with like, from like an acting background, sorry, Ken, but like, can sometimes it can be a challenge for them as well, because when they get a job, they might have to be gone for two months and that just doesn't work for us. And so, um, so yeah, that's the, those are the limitations around the time commitment. I hope that helped at all. I just have to fit it in around my scuba trips. That's all. Yeah. Oh my gosh, then yeah. I mean, we're all divers and we all do big scuba trips. If that's the yeah. other thing, then yeah. yeah, that's that's what we're we will work with you to make sure you get your scuba trips that you get that you want. Because well, if you're not, if you're not a happy diver, then you're not a happy diver here. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm excited. I'm totally gonna do it. But I does anyone know any good rescue diver instructors? I've got to go get that done. And, if and you do, Rachel, I'll, I'll tell you me. I'll tell you that first of all, if you're doing a scuba trip with me that you're paying me to go on the trip. I'll try to make sure we make some special dispensation, you know, for you. But in all seriousness, when Rachel Cushman is talking about the training stuff, just so you guys understand, like for the feeding stuff in, in Blue Cavern, we have right now four, four feed stations. And in Trop Reef, we have six feed stations. So there's 10 different feed stations. What we want you to do is observe one week and then feed three weeks before we sign you off on each one. So that's four weeks per feed station to get signed off times 10 is 40 weeks. So where we say the idea of it's going to take you a year to really get dialed into everything. That's the way the math works out. And if you yeah. keep, you know, missing stuff, Oh yeah. You fed the giant sea bass last week. You were gone for two weeks. And Oh, by the way, we changed how we're doing it when you come. So it's just little, little stuff like that. And like with anything, you know, initial impressions are the strongest your first year in terms of making an impression of, will we be able to rely on you or not is probably going to be most right. indicative of how are things going to go down the road. And, you know, and, and I see people that are, that want to do well, they want to be there, they want to train, you know? And so I just, I try to, the people that want to be there, I don't want them to get in their own way because they're just not really ready to, to do the commitment. Just, just the, it's the, it's the most intense volunteer commitment out of anything, any volunteer job I've ever heard of in this. And I've been in this industry, I guess now for, you know, over 10 years, and I've never heard of this level of a time commitment for a volunteer job. So it's, it, it's a lot, but I mean, what we're doing is super cool. So <laughs> that's why. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm totally into it. And like I said, I'm retired. I have time. You guys are right. I just you don't just want to interfere with all my vacations. You, go. I mean, you just got to do your rescue, which is the most fun class of all anyway. So, oh my okay. God. Okay. This is going to be fun for you. To do it. <laughs> Back when I was working, I retired in January. Before when I was working, I really didn't have time to do things. I had a very demanding job. So it's, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get that on the calendar for sure. But anyway, Ken, if you know some people, tell me. I'll, uh, anyway. I'll, I'll think about it and we'll get you, we'll get you squared away one way or the other. Well, and thank you, Rachel. I hope to meet you again. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> God, two Rachels. I don't know if I can handle that. Oh, was my mic Rachel still open? Rachel C's, by the way. Rachel what? C. We're two Rachel C's. Oh, Rachel. we're both Rachel True. C. We're I don't Rachel meet that C. many Rachels of my vintage. There's more of your vintage. I don't meet that many. So it's pretty cool. And you spell it the same way, too. <laughs> so it's very like special. That, like that Barbie movie that just came out. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Did you yeah, like exactly. Him? We're exactly <laughs> like that. Thank you. We'll start dressing you both in pink and that'll work out as well. Do we have any other, anyone else have a question? Mm. I'm looking around. I'm looking around. I'm looking around. No. Okay. Oh, Mr. Agronic has another question. Fire away, One Ken. more. You know, at the beginning of the call, Ken referred to as, as his boss. And I immediately wondered how much of a nightmare is it to have Ken as an employee? It takes a special kind of person to you deal with that. I can tell you that. Go ahead, um, Rachel. I'm interested in hearing this one. Maybe, and remember, maybe. we're recording this. Special kind of person in a special kind of folder in my email box. <laughs> I, I like to say I'm an, I'm an acquired taste. <laughs> yes. And, but I'll tell you something in all seriousness. I've been there 25 years, as, as most of you know. And one of the cool things, and it, it it may not hold it as true, but it's pretty close to when we started. But the volunteer staff and the paid staff are treated basically equally and, and considered the same. 
volunteer has an idea just as good as a paid staff has an idea. And there are very few places I believe that you will find where you can volunteer time where your ideas get as much respect as, you know, anyone else, anyone who's on, on the payroll. And especially in the dive area, because a lot of us come in with a tremendous amount of, of diving experience. And we can say, well, we've interacted with this, that, or the other, or there's this way to do that. And so it's, 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 it's an interesting way to, to have everything and, and very valuable as well. Otherwise, I mean, I got other things I could be doing, but uh, like I said, on Thursdays, uh, starting at noon, the aquarium's, aquarium's the place to be. There is. Anyone it's else? Pacific. <laughs> oh, don't sing the song. No, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Singing my steel drum. Very good. Well, again, thank you, Rachel Cushman, for our, our presentation uh, tonight. Um, next month, it's, uh, ooh, I didn't look at the date. It's September, uh, I can't see exactly. I think it's September 12th, second Tuesday. Um, Dr. Charlotte Sadler, though, she just got married. I don't know if she's changed her name, but she um, is down at UC San Diego and in the dive medicine staff. And she's been sort of the lead physician nationally for a couple of years about how diving and divers deal with COVID and responses to COVID and, and what do we know and what don't we know and what do we know and we didn't know and blah, blah, blah. So she's going to be with us next month and will bring us up to speed on um, anything we know about COVID, which will be interesting also because as you may know, if you're reading, yes, it's not as bad as it used to be, but there's a little surge going on, a summer surge going on. So it's not, uh, we're not out of the woods yet. And especially from a diving standpoint, and especially to tie back to the Aquarium of the Pacific, you know, we have all kinds of, I'll call them anti-COVID protocols in place because we're swapping dive gear and stuff like that. And a lot of times people don't think about that when you go out uh, onto a dive boat. Gee, I just rinsed my regulator in the same bin. Someone else rinsed their regulator and Is that an issue? Stuff like that. So next month, Charlotte Sadler will be with us and hope hopefully you will be too. So Rachel Cushman, thank you so very much for joining us uh, tonight. Thank you guys all for joining us for this edition of Zoom Seekers. And uh, again, hope you'll be with us in September. Now, as you know, what I'm going to do, just because it's the way Zoom works, I can't kick you out one by one. I kick everybody out at once and I click end meeting for all. So uh, on behalf of, I'd say everybody here at Reef Seekers, but there's only two other employees now. So on behalf of Robert and Eleanor and me, thank you so much for joining us for Zoom Seekers. See you next time.